What's up LEGO Builders? Welcome back to Coconut Brick Studios for another LEGO building tutorial. This is where the fun begins. This time I'm tackling outdoor builds and sharing with you six quick and easy terrain techniques to take your mocks from looking like this oh. to this. This video will be showcasing how to build just the terrain. If you're looking for a tutorial of what to add onto your mocks after that, check out my plant and battle damage tutorials linked in the comments. But if you're ready for some hopefully decent mock building ideas, don't forget to execute order 66 on that like button and let's get started. I'm gonna start with a coconut classic, a basic field. Start by throwing down a layer of filler brick spaced apart enough to allow you to connect plates on top. Next, add said plates, but make sure they're the color you want your terrain to be as they will be mostly exposed once you're all finished. Now you've got your base built, it's time to add texture. Using various one by plate, start placing them down on the base. There's no set method or pattern to where they go, just do what you think looks good. So really the only thing you don't want is large areas of flat, unless of course that's what you're going for. You can double stack some of the plates as well to create small mounds. This is one of my favorite types of terrain to use because it's an easy way to make some rough, uneven looking terrain. Most of the time I cover it up with plant pieces to create fields, jungles, and forests. And the one by plate makes the carpet of foliage look more realistic because it puts the plants at different heights and you can tell everything isn't sitting on a flat layer of plate. The only downside is it uses a lot of one by plate and it can be hard to place minifigs that don't look like they're about to trip and fall because of all the plates. Option number two is real smooth. Hello there. The simple plate and tile floor. Start the same way we did in the last one, a layer of filler brick and plate. You don't have to worry about the color of the plate this time because it will be all covered up. All that's left is to add a layer of plate and tile, but there are a couple of things to remember. First, keep the ratio of plate to tile in favor of tile by a lot. I like to do a ratio of 80 to 20. I found this looks the best because you don't want to have too many studs, but at the same time, make sure to have enough to be able to add plants, minifigs, or whatever else you're going to be putting on top of the build. Also, where you place the studs matters. I've noticed only having single studs throughout the terrain doesn't look very good. I like to clump them up in patches of two or three and have single studs spread out in between those clumps. This is great for real flat desert like terrain or the packed ground of a city or village. I use this technique in my Utpau mock, adding wedge plates to create ridges, steps, and add more detail because by itself, this style looks kind of boring. So you want to make sure to add lots of detail on top to compensate for that, such as plants, small rock formations, or like I previously mentioned, wedge plates. Next is one I want to start using more often because it looks really cool. On a base plate, randomly place some one by and two by brick in the color you want your terrain to be until you've covered a little less than half of the area you're working on. Next, fill in the gaps between the bricks with plate and tile. Add stacks of plate directly around each of the bricks to make them look like little hills and mounds. And this will help them plane into the surrounding terrain better. And in sections where you can't add a whole lot of plate, you can add cheese slopes and one by two slopes to help the areas that look a little blocky and disjointed. If you want to create a specific shape, align your bricks so that the, when the plate goes in, you can create valleys, trenches, or whatever else you want. As for the plate and tile, just add them in a ratio that looks good to you. This technique is great if you have if you don't have access to a lot of filler plate or brick, like what we've been doing with the previous terrain builds. It's also an easy way to create very rough and broken up terrain or trenches in a battlefield. And the nice thing is you don't have to do this for the entire build. You can plate off your mock and leave one or two sections open and use this technique to have more diversity in the terrain. This next one is a technique I haven't used in a long time. It's a riverbed. <laughs> Start by laying out the general shape and width you want your river to be, and then fill in the gap between the two banks with one by blue brick to create the water. Next, add wedge plates on top of the river banks, covering them up and part of the water as well. Use the wedge plates to finish shaping the river and line them up in a way that looks realistic. And if you use slopes of very different angles, you can create sharp turns or bends. You can also add tile and cheese slopes to the tops of the bricks to represent waves and other disturbances on the water. Sometimes I also like to add dark bluish gray bricks and slopes to represent rocks. This is one of the best ways to create smooth, slowly flowing water. And the wedge plates allow you to create some pretty cool looking shapes and build a river in a way that it wouldn't normally be possible. The downside is it's hard to make the water look choppy or turbulent because of the lack of studs on top, but that can be easily fixed with some trans light blue round studs and a little creativity. For tip number five, we are once again using wedge plates. 
I love wedge plates when it comes to terrain builds. Nature is full of rounded steps, plateaus, mounds, and other various structures, and wedge plates are a great way to capture a lot of those looks. I'm doing another flat tile and plate base, but this time it will have some nice detail on top. On one side, I made steps or ridges with wedge plates, and on the other, there will be some small hills and builds. There's no method to these, just build what you think looks good and try to make the angles and plates flow together nicely. I use this technique in almost every mock I do. Very rarely do you see perfectly flat ground out in nature, so using wedge plates like this is a great way to step up your terrain builds without making them look too bumpy or uneven and not able to hold minifigs and vehicles very well. LEGO makes a lot of different kinds of wedge plates with different angles as well, so you can create all different kinds of shapes. The one I use the most is the 3x3 wedge plate, or the goat plate. <laughs> The last technique is a simple hill. You may think all you gotta do is stack plate on brick on top of each other, but that's gonna get you something straight out of Minecraft. <gasps> Start by stacking brick and plate on top of each other to create the shape of the hill. Make sure to break up the rows of brick so you don't have even steps like you see on a pyramid. Make some sections taller or longer than others. The main thing to remember is the less geometrical and organized your hillside looks, the more realistic it will be. Once the hill is built, go back through and add plate on each row of brick, shrinking the height of each row and making the hillside look more rounded and less blocky. Apply the same unorganized practice with the plate as well. You guys have seen me using this technique since the good old days of Naboo. I love it because of how simple it is to build, just brick and plate. And even if you don't get the hillside to look super smooth, you can always cover it up with grass to round and smooth everything over. The more you practice with this one, the easier it gets, obviously, because it's hard for me to really verbalize how exactly I go about building these. You kind of just have to build it and figure it out as you go. But hopefully this tutorial is a good starting point for you. These are some of the most commonly used terrain techniques I build with, minus the river. What I like most about each of these is that they are just starting points, and there are so many variations of each technique you can use to create different looking builds by swapping in different colors and parts. Using just this video, you can create anything from ice to sandy dunes. Let me know in the comments which of these was your favorite, as well as what tutorials you would like to see me do in the future, and I will catch you next time, but until then, happy building.